Caden Groves takes his third victory at this Welter. Jumbo Visma take their third Grand Tour. Sepkus with his first and Caden Groves with his first points jersey of any Grand Tour. And I cannot remember a final racing stage of a Grand Tour being that exciting for that long, Dan. It was brilliant, wasn't it? It was, yeah. yeah. Groves taking the victory, Dainese nowhere. But Sepkus, <laughs> I think, was just brilliant from start to finish in this Grand Tour. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was a fantastic finale. It was, there's a big surprise coming up in this show, I think, and uh, a big change in the predictions, unfortunately. <laughs> But no, no, that was that was fantastic. <laughs> Can I just explain for anyone who maybe doesn't follow quite as closely as we do the own challenge that we have going on in the studio? Dan picked Alberto Dionisi for the stage, and he has been spitting fire out of his ears, if that's possible, for most of the last ten kilometres. And I'm very impressed that you've made it to studio, actually, yeah. Dan, because he did almost walk off. Um, <laughs> Dionisi is not the story of the day, is he, Adam? It's Caden Gross, and you've got to take your hat off to him for his third win after such a big gap between the last stage win and this one and a very very different way of winning it as well incredible way of winning it i'd say i mean <clears throat> That group with what Remco eventually yeah. started, a couple of guys that are off the front, Remco jumping out of that group, and then a couple more riders going across to that, well, quite a few more, and a couple being dropped in the process. Caden was one of those riders, so just recognising the danger, and ultimately he had to follow Remco today, just in case mm. he stayed away for those points. But it was the right move to make for him. I mean, just, just the way of a sprinter to be able to read a race and say, I need to go with that, I can't mm. just let that go. It's the perfect way to finish a race like that. Yes, OK, it's nice to win in a bunch sprint when you've got all your team helping you. To be able to say to you, like, not directly say to your teammates, but, like, I've got this, don't mm. worry about it. it. It must be... The feeling he must have must be incredible right now. Yeah, because we always see a group go off the front when we get to our final laps, whether it be Madrid or Paris, and I was going to say nine times out of ten, probably 99 times out of 100, mm. they're brought back. So usually with that group, you think, OK, we'll let them go, we'll catch them and we'll have our bunch sprint. The the difference maybe being Remco's in there, Ghana's in there, and Kieran Groves. Yeah, exactly. And I think that the sprint teams were very happy when yeah. Rui Costa went up the row with Nico Dents and Leonard Kemner. Three riders up the row. Yes, they're strong, but they very much have that under control. And just as they came out of one of the hairpin bends, whilst I was in commentary, I was looking in the distance, and there was a white blob came round on his own. I was like, that's Remco Avenepoel <laughs> on the attack. And like Adam said, Caden had no choice but to go with him because although Caden Groves had picked up the 20 points at the intermediate sprint, it still wasn't mathematically won that green jersey competition. If Avenepoel had won that stage today and Groves had finished 10th or worse, I think, Avenepoel would have gone into the green jersey on the final day. So he had no choice but to go up the road with him. I think if I was Groves, I probably would have said, I'm just marking you out of this. I'm yeah. this round. I just want to make sure I win the green jersey. But fair play to yeah. him. Equal turns pretty much from everybody within that group. And I think that that win today for Groves could not be any more satisfying in doing it in the way that he did today. Yes, he'd have loved to want a bunch sprint as well, but doing it in that way is incredibly special.